Hi guys. Um, hope, hope, hopefully you're doing well today. I know I put up a sermon um, yesterday, but the word was so burning in me, I had to actually do another one today. This one is called Swim Through It. And first of all, for this sermon, I need to tell you what happened yesterday. Um, I had been preaching yesterday for 20 minutes and then I realized that the sermon I had been preaching wasn't recording so what you saw yesterday was actually my second attempt at a sermon. Um, and then while the sermon was uploading yesterday, I saw, I was, I, I watched my, uh, recording of New Amsterdam, which is a medical drama. And on New Amsterdam, on the season, uh, finale, um, a spoiler alert, they got into an accident. And the he the head of the hospital, his wife was pregnant. She had a baby, and on the way back um, from their home to the hospital, they got into an accident, and his wife died. And on the season premiere, um. You're trying to figure out, well, who died because it was kind of a cliffhanger. So you didn't know a couple of the main characters, two doctors and the medical director, which is where the whole thing is, is um, said um, about this medical director and this hospital. And a couple other people were in the accident too. So you spent the whole first episode of the season premiere thinking who died, who died in this tragic accident. And it turned out um, there was a MT that died and there was his wife that died. And now um, they're saying, this character's name is Max, and um, there's um, everybody's wondering what, why Max is not grieving. He seems to keep going. He seems to keep going, and they're like, Ooh. at the end of the show yesterday, um, we're like, I wonder how Max is getting through it, and one of the doctors is like saying, oh. He is, and whatever, and you think everything's all right, but you you learn that although she's gone, and although he's raising a baby daughter, he's still seeing her. Um, he, when he comes home, he still sees her at his home. He still um, talks to her. You learn this, and. The, and I was like, oh, that's why he's not grieving, because in his mind, in his self -con subconscious, she's still around. And so there's that. There's that. And um, as I told you, I wrote to someone um, the other day about a month ago now and at the top of that letter I was like I said jump in and swim that was literally literally the first line of the letter and don't worry I'll put all this together so I was thinking last night um, about how we're afraid to to do what God has told us because we don't know 
what's gonna work out and we're so worried and we're so afraid and he w- he said just jump in and he'll be with us not only with us he said he said swimming can take a lot out of you it does take a lot out of you and he wants me to tell you swim when your back hurts swim when you can't when you can't when you can't go anymore go a little more he he said to tell you that beyond the swim is something greater beyond the swim is something greater beyond the swim there's something waiting for you and you may get tired your legs may ache your back may ache your head may want to drop in the water but don't give up keep on swimming keep on plugging keep on going towards your ultimate purpose and um as I was thinking about it, as I was, my mind went from swimming to what I saw from New Amsterdam, that the guy, that Max's wife is dead, um, but he's still hanging on to her. She still hasn't left him. And I was thinking, some sometimes the reason why we don't swim, the reason why we don't go for what God has planned for us is that we're holding on to those dead things. We're still seeing our dead wives when we go home. We're still holding on to built to bitterness. We're still holding on to strife. We're still holding on to fear. You need to let this go in this season because what was in the last season will not be in the first season. Will not be in this season. The old things that you've been dealing with, the old bitter feelings, the old, the old bitter strife, the old whatever you're dealing with, you need to let that go and embrace the swim. And you know what? Swimming develops muscle. The more you swim, you start from the kiddie pool, like I said yesterday, but you don't stay in the kiddie pool. You, you have to um, venture out into the deep and know that he'll be with you. You don't, you can start in the kiddie pool, but you don't stay in the kiddie pool for 20 years. You have to venture out and know that he'll catch you and know that it's his game, not yours. And that he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's putting together and all you need to do is jump in and trust him and know that he'll meet you at the end. And he won't only meet you at the end. He'll meet you in the middle of it. When you feel tired, when your arms are, are tired from uh, your breath strokes and your back strokes and your back flips, when you've done everything you can do, he'll take over and meet you in the middle and be a coach for you. He'll be like, yay, come on, come on, you can do it, come on. And he'll egg you on for the, for the rest of the race. Because I think of the Ol- Olympic swimmers when they feel tired or the runners or anybody that's racing Um, because when you start the race, you seem to be okay. Everything seems to be cool. You're going. But when you have been doing it for hours and hours, your legs get tired, your back starts aching, 
your, you know, everything gets tired and you need a push. And the Lord's saying, I will be that push. I will be that per that person saying, go, you can do it. And he wants me to tell you, you can do this. You can start that business. You can start that ministry. All you have to do is jump in and swim for your life. Swim despite the fear. Swim despite the heartache. Swim through heartbreak. Swim through it all. Because there is a purpose to this. There is a purpose to this swimming thing. There is a purpose. There is a testimony at the end of this. And there is a reason why he's having you swim so hard. The reason why you're having to swim so hard may not be for you. It's for other people that need to hear your story. That need to hear how you started that business. Needed to hear how you stayed in the water while they got out. When other people get out of the water you continue and know that God is greater than anything you will be facing. God is the best coach cheering you on. Know that he will be with you in it. Drop off all those dead things. I know it can be scary to let go, but trust me, beloved, what he has for you is greater than the bitterness you're carrying. What he has for you is greater than the anger you're carrying. What he has for you is greater than whatever you're carrying. The guilt, the shame, let it go. You can't change it. It's just stopping you from embracing the greatness inside of you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that we're swimming today. Despite it all, we're swimming. We're swimming through the fear. We're swimming through the failure. We're swimming through the doubt. We're we're swimming when we don't know what else to do. We're just swimming, Lord, and we will follow you through it all. And we let go of these dead things. The dead things of guilt and of shame and of fear and of doubt and of failure and all those negative feelings, we drop them, Lord God. Whatever we need to do, to swim towards your purpose for our lives, we'll do today, God. I declare greatness is rising up inside of you. I declare a resilient spirit. You will not get out of the pool. You're too close to stop now. You're too close to stop now. Yes, Lord, you're too close to stop now. And I declare I declare greatness in Jesus' name. I declare you will be who God has called you to be. All those dreams and all those visions that he's put inside you. You will have them and you will and you, you will see victory. You will see victory. You will see victory. All you need to do is trust him. All you need to do is know that he is God and he will be with you in it. And it's not going to be easy. I'm not gonna tell you that it is, but it will be worthwhile. When people are getting saved through what you have to say, when people are being helped through that computer business or that hair business or whatever, you'll see the fruits the fruits will be worth the pain the fruits will be worth the struggle it will all be worth it it will all be worth it it's growing you these light afflictions are not going to be compared to the glory that you'll see and all the pain and all the stress and all the strife and everything is growing you It's growing you. The swim is growing your muscles. Each lap is growing your muscles. 
Each hurdle is growing your muscles. It's all growing you. It's it's all making you tougher, making you stronger. The struggle is making you stronger. The struggle is making you more resilient. You will be you will be a much brighter person. Not brighter, you'll but but you'll be a much richer person when you come out of this. And when I say richer, I mean richer in faith, richer in mindset, richer in whatever, not whatever, but richer in whatever God has for you. When you come out of this struggle, when you come out of the water and you're drenching and you're tired, it will all be worth it because the people that will be affected by what you've gone through, what you're dealing with at this moment, they will thank you because they won't have to go through it. You'll tell them about the swim and they'll know what to avoid and they'll know how to handle it because you went before. And I remember seeing Donnie McClurkin at something, on something, t talking about his his molestation and, and the fact that he was molested twice as a, as a first as a kid and then as a eight year old boy and ten year old boy, and he was asking God. Uh, why he had to go through all that, why he had to go through all the pain and all the sexual confusion and everything. And the Lord said to him, somebody had to go to the cross. That, this whole thing that you're going through is your cross. This whole thing that you're going through is your cross and you, ha and you have to bear it because after you bear it, the Lord is going to get fruits out of it that you wouldn't believe. Fruits of joy. Fruits of peace. And people will be benefiting from your experience. Because there's nothing like a good testimony of God's goodness or to let people know that He is good. And if he can take you through it, he can take them through it. Um, so guys, thank you. I'm out of time. Thank you for listening to me today. And I pray that the love of God be with you and be upon you exponentially this week. Thanks. Bye. You made a way when my back was against the wall and it looked as if it was over. You made a way and I'm standing here only because you made a way. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. Before me in a cold, there is nothing and that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you made away don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know why but I'm grateful you made a way I don't know why but I'm grateful made a way Hallelujah Hallelujah
you, Lord. I give you praise, God. I worship you, God. I'll, I'll see you next week. Bye.